in there. Young money millionaire right there. Bro, and I just brought this $50. John, pay me that 50 It's not a chance. Zero percent. It's definitely hard to say goodbye to past teammates. FNS won a trophy with him. It's taught me a lot about the game and how to think about the game. Just overall being a better leader and a better person. Sam, just a super good, outgoing kid that always brought the vibes up. And then Artis, a European spy, double agent, whatever you want to call him. But uh, jokes aside, very outgoing, very funny, and yeah, just a good guy as well. Oh my God. <laughs> I think our guys last year liked each other, but I think they had a tough time playing for each other. As far as team dynamics last year, basically we had a very clicky culture. It wasn't anyone's fault last year that it, that happened. It just naturally became that way because some people just hung with more people. And I think that ruins like team chem. That was something I wanted to avoid this year. On paper, clearly the best roster by a long shot. Incredible amount of experience. Everyone who's been there before, champions. So you gotta put it all together and grow as a team and they gotta like each other and they wanna play for each other. So that's what we have to be, be able to communicate to the point where you know, we're one step ahead of everybody else and that'll make us a champion this year. Let's go down the line here. Um, Max, how do you feel on split? Matt, Jimmy, how do you feel on split? I have a long history with energy. I've been on this org. This is the third time now. First time was in Counter-Strike back in, I think, 2018 to 2020, and then eventually switched to Valorant. That was before franchising came out, and so that was a fun stint. And after Energy, I went to EG. People know, you know, we won champs, and then things went downhill after that um, for other reasons. The biggest change from EG to Energy is the org itself. You do a lot more, like, content and stuff. Whoa. What is it? Andy's gonna be pissed. I dare you to touch it. Uh, what? Just getting to know the team together in a different way. I don't know, like you're actually doing stuff together. Because back on EG, we would just like do whatever. <laughs> Are you trolling or no? The main draw for me to join Energy was I would say the strength of the team was the biggest factor. Just get me on a new team from EG. Ethan and Demon One did not have a good experience with ET and it became very clear that they wanted to go someplace else. And we we jumped at the chance to get him again. We we're like, of course you want Ethan back and of course we want Demon One, but so did everybody else. So we were like, okay, this was a massive game of chess and we didn't get a stream answer from EG no matter what. I thought we would always get them, Ethan and Demon One, our manager, Jamie is like our general manager and he sometimes was like freaking out and saying we should like find free agent people at the time sometimes so it got like a little stressful there. We talked to EG as much as we could and then they ghosted us and then people left and people got fired and people quit and new people had the job and new people didn't want to talk to us and we talked to Riot and we talked to the Players Association, we talked to agents and we were like well we have no idea what's going on and time just kept ticking and we had the opportunity to sign a lot of great players, a lot of people wanted to come to Energy and we we gambled. Honestly, when we kept passing up on those people, I just was like, okay, it's all or nothing. If we don't get them, our season is chalked. If we get them, then we have a good season. So I was kind of banking all that, and I lived it kind of more stress-free than other people in our org. I'm sure other people in our org were more stressed than me. At one part, it looked like we were gonna get f***ed, and we were gonna end up with me and Jamie filling in as the you know the fourth and fifth on this team, because I, I didn't think it was gonna happen at the very end. Literally, all those people we passed up on, like. It, just made it that much harder because our options kind of slimmed down at the end. But I was like, I was like, surely eventually we'll get them, right? Like, uh, there's no way like they just don't play next year. We actually got the team we wanted at the very end, but we got it at the very end. They did not have a lot of time to practice. That team didn't even get together until early January, and then they had to play their match, and we played a grand total of what, three matches. The collapsing collide and collision course send them straight to the lower bracket. He's been tagged, he's triple facing. Another one falls. Wow. Four bullets left, switches weapons, time is of the essence! You know, we didn't have much time going into kickoff. I definitely wouldn't say we played well. When we did get the roster together, we definitely were behind. I mean, like, beginning of January, we just like, 
kind of just figured out what we wanted him to do. And it still took like two weeks of trial and error. So we wasted like two weeks on that. And then we had two weeks of real practice, but then we still were kind of changing things. So there's like not enough time to like solidify things. So our map pool suffered for that. Just for me personally, I've just not had a lot of time to adapt to the new role that I was in. And I think it was also just like a chemistry thing. You know, chemistry isn't just, it's just not just, it doesn't come out of nowhere, right? You need time to build that. We thought we had a great team last year and we were a little disappointed with the results. And we wanted to build a winner. And now it's up to Chet, who we, are, who we know is a fantastic strategic coach, an incredibly hard worker. But his biggest task will be, I think, making the vibes good, the personalities mesh together, you know, bring out the best of everybody. That's the stuff you don't see about a coach that is really where their genius is. Get a job, get a job, get a job. What am I saying? Yeah, just say, keep, just keep your rolling. We'll, we'll... Get a job, get a job, you can get a job. There's something about knowing your players, knowing how to, you know, but get the best out of them, motivate them, put the right pieces in the right places to, you know, to get the job done at the right time. And Jet's been successful in his career doing that, but I think this is his biggest task because we clearly have a team that's built to win. 140, 140, body shot Barry. Nice. I think my pass with Ethan definitely boosts my confidence with him as an IGL because me and Daps back in the day were always like, eventually he'll probably take over as an in-game leader just because he talks a lot and he has good ideas. He personifies a lot of our values. He's a calming influence. He's a leader. He's been able to transition between being a champion in Counter-Strike to being a champion in Valorant just pretty easily, but he works really hard and he's a little bit under the radar. And so I feel like that's kind of us also. And I'll give you a hundred bucks you can pop this on your face. I mean, getting Demon 1 is obviously insane. Ethan was like a hard vouching for him as well. Last year, you kind of saw how Demon 1 played. He didn't really care what people thought about him. I think his uh, overall confidence has been a thing that he instills on the team. He just wants to be the best, and I think we all kind of see that in him. So we just try to support him the best that we can. Day and night. What? What? I talk to her and I keep stressing my mind. mind. What? What? I love for peace, but see, I don't attain. What? What? Why need to keep the silly game we play? Play. It is really the chemistry and the combination of people. I feel like we have that. We have a really good chemistry this year. You know, we have the backbone of the team with Victor and Crashies. I know they always get lumped together and they don't deserve to, but they also deserve to because they're just so solid and they're such great communicators, especially giving Ethan what he needs. We picked up Jimmy and that was like easy, like no brainer in my head. I was just like, we already played with him in Optic and had good success with him. Uh, he just kind of knows what we expect out of him. Uh, we already know the personality that he brings to the team. And if I wrote this song, would you fall in love? Would you fall in love if I saw you at the club? Okay! It's gonna be a banger, it's gonna be a banger. <laughs> He's hilarious, so like, that's a great fit. I mean, I'm happy with him. He just, he pops off too. I mean, he has high level of skill. So everyone in the roster just can pop off at some moment. Trying to spam through. Oh my gosh, he's gotten it this far. Now Nags is so weak. Oh my gosh, Morph with the ace. Victor the flight can only do so much fights once. What? What is that from Victor? Oh my god. Crashies once again in a 1v3. Oh. Looking to collide and he does. Where's the spike? It's dropped down right there, Nades. Close to the corner, he's run. He's getting away with murder. More than one for maybe Demon. One it is. Definitely hurt losing to Sentinels, but I would say we've been putting in more effort. We've been focusing more, gave us motivation, pushed through. The, the silver linings of not making Madrid is obviously you get a lot of time to practice. We've been practicing the whole time, so all through Madrid, kind of playing catch up because we really didn't have much time going into kickoff. It's pretty hard to get like all our protocols and fundamentals down, also like seven maps, all of our comps down, all of our strats, just a lot to cram into a month. Uh, we've been just trying to get everything down that we couldn't get before. The feel after we lost to Sen was pretty brutal. I mean, there's not much to say after you get a close first map, then the third map being that brutal was like really hard for everyone because there was just, like, some people were, were really sad and some people were just like, okay, we just have to take the next month to like 
get better and like be better. So playing loud in week one will definitely be a hard game. Going into Americas, I definitely think it's the strongest region right now. Uh, anyone in the top five can beat each other on a given day. I feel like you have to be playing your best on that day or you can lose. This is one of the harder groups, um, but I think it'll test us pretty early. So yeah, we're definitely looking to play our best on every match day. Loud is definitely a hard opponent, definitely hard, but we worked on ourselves a lot, so I think we're way better prepared than we used to be. Just tough mix, tough mix. Smoke and spawn, smoke and spawn, smoke and spawn. I think everyone just wants to win. So I'm sure everyone's just putting like as much effort as they can to, so that doesn't happen again. I mean, it can't really because the format's not the same, but you, you know what I mean? Just like, we want to put in more work so we can have better results. Heads up. This is the hardest working team we've ever had. To the point where if they're my boys, my personal children, I'd be like, hey, maybe you guys should dial back a little bit. Uh, but they're on a mission. And I think they, they, you know, they were uh, adorned with the burden of, hey, if they don't win, it's a failure this year. So they're working hard, and I feel like all hard work will pay off, and the fans should know that this is a team who wants to make the energy fans proud. As far as our mentality goes for the fans, we work as hard as we can so we can give you guys more matches to watch. You guys can expect us to just be more drilled and probably more disciplined this upcoming season. The support from fans has been has been huge recently, especially after our wins. There's a bunch of support and I've noticed that, you know, every every time I come back to energy, the fans are awesome. To all the energy fans out there, thank you for all the support and I can't wait to go back on the stage and perform for you guys. Thank you to all the energy fans that support us after every win and every loss and we hope to do good for you guys this season. Does anyone know why there are so many visa problems happening right now? Loud in a similar boat, we believe, with their visa situations. Are Loud even going to be able to play it? Does anyone have an update on this? Because I don't know whether no, they're I even going to get to America in time.